right? So at this point, if you need to have some sort of physically accurate uh, shape that's produced, right? Uh, okay, my viewport had a little hang up there. All right, so um, if we want this to be a physically accurate simulation, right, where it's just like our piece of lycra that we're working with as a, as a model. Um, we would need to keep this at one, and we'd have to really pull on these anchor points in order to get it to take in a nice uh, tension shape where we see uh, this nice curvature at the edge, and it really minimizes all the forces internal to, um, internal to the shape, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn the preview off of this uh, original mesh as well, and we can start to play with this, right? Go ahead and take a moment to um, uh, manipulate your anchor points, uh, see what happens when you stretch it really far. You can manipulate them both in X, Y, and Z and see what kind of shapes we get. Here's your kind of standard saddle shape uh, coming from two um, vertices that are raised in the vertical orientation and two that are uh, remained low, and these being our anchor points. All right, so give that a shot real quick, and while you're doing that, I'm just going to uh, go back through and label all of the elements in our file so that uh, you have this for a reference. So I'll pause my, block my timer down here in the system tray, and this is going to be our rest length factor, the slider. This was our quad divide. This is our springs from mesh. This is mesh decompose. These are pretty special. We'll call those our simulation controls. And I like to give those types of uh, special inputs a different color. This is our kangaroo physics engine. And our simulated mesh. All right. So we have this set up now. And uh, let's take a couple of questions. And then we'll uh, look at, um, with this same file, a way to sketch out some different possibilities using tension systems. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them into the question window, and we'll address them as a group now. Okay, so there's a question about the stiffness, right? The stiffness that is a part of the input for springs from mesh. This value has to do with the actual stiffness of the spring, right? So in the same way that if you were developing uh, your own spring manually under the kangaroo forces spring, springs from line, these are idealized springs, right? So they don't have any uh, capacity to resist axial force or bend or anything like that. So stiffness is coming from the same input here. It's just uh, being passed through. If you want to make your spring more or less stiff, like can it bounce around a lot or should it try and go directly to its, um, to its rest length, those are the properties you'll be specifying here. And some general rules of thumb that we've found for these values, 1,000 to 3,000. We found that if you go too much lower than that or too much higher than that, it actually uh, it fails as a spring as a physical object. All right, so that's a really great question. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of different uh, ways we can use this file beyond what we just did, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure I save this, and I'm going to develop a couple of alternative uh, input meshes that we can work with, right? So if we were to copy this mesh face over, we could start to um, kind of build up a more complex shape if we were to 
uh, duplicate it. So I'll mirror it and then move it vertically. Maybe connect it, uh, that new space with a, a new 3D face. And copy this over. We'll scale it so that we get kind of three sides of a box. Right? And now we can work with these three, if we uh, sorry, these four mesh faces, if we join them, right, we can add that as our input mesh. Make sure we reset our simulation. Add um, anchor points wherever we want. We'll go along the top here and maybe here along the bottom. Come back to wireframe, hit go. Let's make sure that we reset our anchors so that we choose our new points. All right. And this can start to create a, a kind of minimal surface between the anchor points that we specify, right? And you can pull these points around to get it to flex in various conditions, but it is very definitely trying to smooth out all of the pressure, again, all internal in this case, to create the resulting equilibrium shape. All right, and uh, one other option that um, I think is kind of fun uh, with this same file, again, because we've set it up so that it can work with multiple different types of mesh inputs. I'm going to create a mesh primitive box. Just draw a box. Shaded view. I'm going to explode it and I'm going to remove the top and bottom face so I just have the kind of sides of the box. Join it back together. I'm going to scale the, um, the top four vertices about half in both X and Y. So I have this kind of truncated pyramid. And I'll mirror this um, through a plane. So vertex, vertex, and vertex. Right? If I join this again, this is not too different um, by its imp like starting state from this. So you could go ahead and simulate it, but you could also copy this a few times. Snapping to the vertices, so you have this uh, three by three grid of these guys. Join. Uh, we need a few anchors, so um, in wireframe, I'm just going to go around the outside of the um, kind of configuration of meshes and get these outside corners. All right, and I can just input these same objects, these points, and this mesh. Into Grasshopper. All right, and now it's trying to To solve, right? So if I hide the meshes, maybe a little bit easier to see. We can start to pull these uh, these anchor points around and change the mesh, right? We have these kind of inner volumes uh, through here, as well as these perforations through here. So the the kind of premise in terms of what are anchors and what mesh simple mesh inputs are um, are our starting or initial state allows us to develop a lot of different types of simulations, all using the same uh, kind of uh, structural logic, which would be something that is stressed internal 
uh, to the surface of the shape um, by just specifying different um, initial inputs, right, to those anchors or to those primitive meshes. Okay, so um, I'm going to pause this so it's not running in the background while we talk about one more question that we had, uh, which uh, was, how do you start to match real-life materials, real cables that have area and stiffness? Well, um, for our simulation uh, with Kangaroo, we can start to do that uh, very easily because the values that we're using to specify in our springs, right, they're bound to the units of our file, and we can start to specify uh, forces and stiffness factors that would work for idealized springs. Now, again, uh, for an idealized spring, we're essentially working with a line segment, right? It has no cross-sectional area. It only has uh, the ability to um, the only only ability to translate force through it, right? So it can um, essentially move. Um, force through the, uh, the line segment to act as a spring, but it doesn't have any cross-sectional area here, so it can't work with uh, bending forces, right? There are some other forces that are going to be found here under uh, the forces tab that you can start to like pair uh, a bending force with a spring or, or something similar, but um, you're still going to be working with uh, mostly in this paradigm, kangaroo as a physics engine, as idealized physical geometry, right, um, that doesn't have all of the material properties that uh, we might have in the world. Because if this thing was in the world, um, even if it was just a sheet of lycra, it's going to have a lot more properties than uh, that would affect it than what we see here. But this is a good way to simulate such a system, right, to approximate it, uh, using real-life factors as the uh, pressures that derive the end shape. So if you're really looking for in-depth um, applications where you can apply material uh, properties to it, you're going to be going into another uh, kind of realm. It's related but different, uh, kind of optimization routines, etc., that use uh, material uh, properties, and uh, factors as a way to calculate everything, right? So structural optimization and things like that can be done in some other platforms and probably most likely should be done in some other platforms uh, beyond the scope of Kangaroo, all right? But Kangaroo is very flexible in terms of all the different types of things we can do with it and um, all the different ways we can experiment with creating shapes that are bound by physical properties, uh, at least in the idealized case. Okay, so great question. Um, let's go ahead and uh, bounce uh, to the next exercise, right? We have here, we had the simple um, net, the one that's made up of multiple faces, and the one that's a kind of designed uh, configuration from the initial mesh. So uh, that's a good kind of suite of different examples. And let's bounce over to the next exercise, which is going to be um, not based on nets or and tension systems, but on something uh, slightly different.